I'm doing a uh, engine swap in a 76 Ford Maverick. I'm doing a 3.7 Mustang V6 engine swap. So first off, there's some misinformation out there. The first thing, the first thing that I read, because I was looking at the dimensions on this engine right here. So I was looking up dimensions for this engine, and uh, what I read was that this engine is basically as wide and is similar in height, and the only thing difference is length on the actual block and the motor itself, you know, the width of the pulleys. And so, first off, when I put this engine in, first issue was that the exhaust manifolds was hitting the towers that's the first first issue so that tells you right there that this block with the uh, exhaust manifolds is wider than the 302 which is, is a dual overhead cam engine also this part of the intake right here is really close to the end of this shock tower right here um, another issue that's so far has been the biggest um, is the actual um, sump of the oil pan okay this is what I'm talking about this right here is the Mustang F-150 3.7 oil pan which you see how big that pump is or the sump is I should say and it's in the back of the engine so all the research I have done um, I found a solution to that issue and that solution is this 3.5 front wheel drive oil pan that's the uh, solution though first off let me uh, where I just now put that at? I just now had it and I might have said that okay First difference in these oil pans is the sumps is in a different place. This is the back on that one, and, that, and basically the sump is from the middle front. So the sump on this pan is not near as deep, and it's to the front. So that's the first thing. It doesn't have this center bolt right here. One of these back bolts is threaded in this and not in this. And this right here, which is for the AC compressor, on the front wheel drive, it was, it was right here, I cut it off, because as you see, it's not on this one, but uh, I did research, and the, all the bolts are in the same spot, all the, uh, all these oil drains, all these oil drains right here, they're all in the same spot, but I put, this is the pickup tube for the tube for the Mustang this is the pickup tube for the uh, front wheel drive now <laughs> I did do one thing that I, I did forget one thing now this this baffle right here for the oil it's got a hole back here for the uh, I don't know if I can see it it's got a hole back here for the uh, actual where it bolts right there where it bolts for this right here so when I got the oil pan today I needed to get this this baffle this oil baffle for the front wheel drive and I didn't do that so this is not going to be mounted which right now it's only got the bolts in and it's not tight but it's not going to have a mount now it's I don't think it's going to be dire but uh it's uh it's going to be a real chore to get this in this car. And um, honestly, I, I'm i approximately 60% sure that I can get this motor mounted in this car without uh, replacing the front end. Actually, I might. Uh, 60 is pretty. I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I guess I'd say I'm more 50-50. So, 
honestly, I know I could get it in the car with with the uh, with the current suspension. Um, I can always like cut this down and rebox it in and just make it more narrow and bring this in. But the only concern I have that I've noticed, which I don't know if I can overcome, is where the exhaust manifolds come on this. Now I can cut it down about an, uh, about maybe right here from this bolt. So I can cut all this out back here and I will gain a, a good chunk from there, on, you know, all the way up to here. So I gain a pretty good chunk with that. But I plan on putting headers on this thing and I don't know if I'll have enough room for headers. And not only that, that rear suspension, because this is power steering. Now, if it wasn't power steering, I don't think I would have the issue because that hydraulic piston wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be there like it's right here, there. But it wouldn't be there if this was a non-power steering car. But I'm not going to give up my power steering. I'm going to put electric power steering in it. Um, or electric power steering pump, I should say. I'm not going to do electric power steering because it's not as good as... The feel's not as good as actual power steering, and uh, you can do conversion. I think it's a better conversion with the actual um, electric power steering pump than the uh, than the electric power steering in the column. It's just got better feel. Um, plus, there's no lag. You know, once you turn it on, it just goes. I don't think there's a lag, I should say. Um, I heard there might be a, a slight delay, but there's a pretty there's like a six second delay with the electric power steering for you know like for the steering columns i think there's like a six second delay on that and being it's an aftermarket system it's not um you know fixable but i can i can actually cut this down and reshape this and box it in different and i can move this in a little bit not much but i can cut from here on up and notch these but I still don't know I mean ultimately I would really like to put a new front end on there I, I, I know I will eventually do that but to get it running and driving it's still up in the air whether I'll need it or not but I know that the transmission tunnel is going to have to be modified because that 6R80 transmission is a pretty big transmission it's a pretty big transmission I mean, and these C4s was not. So, but I'm really kind of, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not stuck because I haven't really started mocking it up yet. Um, I just got the oil pan today. I did have the motor set down without the oil pan. It fits pretty well. Um, I have a little bit of uh, issues with these brackets in the front here. Because of the alternator and the AC compressor on this car, I'm putting AC back in, on it, which it's going to get a more modern system. I'm probably going to take the system, the system out of a, out of one of my Ford Escorts. I'll probably put the heater box in this, the more modern AC, the R34 AC, the uh, more modern. It's going to be an R34 system, and it's going to have a bigger condenser in it, which is a pretty thick condenser, but it's not big. It's going to have a lot better AC in it than this one did, and it's not going to take as much power from the engine. I'm actually going to use the Mustang um, compressor. Um, I haven't completely figured out what system I'm going to use for it, because you can do a, a simple system or a little bit more comprehensive system. It's not hard to do. You just, you know... You basically, but you do have to have, you do have to have, um, something to monitor the actual, um, pressure on the AC, um, because if it gets too low, it could damage the pump. So you will have to do that in a modern system and you might not have had to do that on this older system. So there will have to be some kind of, it will have to be computerized in some way. But I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, but I'm very excited to build this car because I've been building Ford Escorts for uh, a long time, which is the mod a modern 
economy car now I'm building a vintage um, economy car but the only difference is this car right here is going to weigh less than my little 99 Ford Escort and it's going to have more than double the horsepower it's going to have around 320 horsepower and it's going to weigh about 24 23 maybe even 2200 pounds with me in it it'll probably be probably be pretty close to what the Escort weighs without me but this is a light 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 car it's not a big car it's light and man it's going to be nasty for 300 horsepower um, this car's been nasty and um, first off I like I said I'm going to do I'm going to do a more modern front end eventually uh, but I would like to get this running and driving with the current front end at least to where I can run it and drive it you know at least until I decide to uh, by the actual setup and uh, also I haven't decided whether I'm going to do independent rear suspension or well I mean I know I'm going to do the uh, if I don't do the independent rear I'm going to do the um, um, the four link I'm, I'm going to get rid of leaf rings in the back it's, it's going to happen that's going to happen so this is not going to have uh, this is not going to have and it's also going to get an explorer 8.8 .8 with rear disc brakes. This is going to have four wheel disc. Um, I haven't decided what type of brakes I'm going to put on it. If I'm just going to use the standard uh, Mustang um, rotors and calipers, or and you know just the, the Explorer rear disc, or which is all. I mean, it would stop like it stopped really, really excellent with disc brakes only around it. This thing would stop like. I mean, you'd probably have problems skidding and stop so quick because it's so light. So you'd have to, you'd have to get used to it because you could easily lock up the wheels on this thing with, with that kind of braking power. I'm going to have pretty meaty tires. I'm going to have 18, 17, 18s or 18, 19s on this car, 17, 18s in the front. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I um, am up to on this car. I've already got the wiring pretty much figured out I haven't started on the wiring but if I can't do or if I can't get the engine mocked up in this front end the way it is I'm gonna focus on fixing the roof damage because it has ru uh, rust in the roof the floors are pretty solid there's a couple pinholes in the passenger side it's solid other than a couple pinholes you can see where there's this little bit of chunk of metal coming out of a couple little spots so I think I'm gonna treat it with some uh, some uh, some of the rust um, converter and uh, I'm gonna put some JB weld in the little divots just to keep it from rusting through and and eventually I'll replace that pasture floor pan but the cowl's not rusted it doesn't get no water in it when it rains the fender aprons, the, the battery tray is good. The, uh, you know, all the frame rails are good. There's no rust in the aprons, aprons at all. Um, most of the rust on this car is strictly surface rust. Um, there is a small rust hole on the, or not really a rust hole. It's starting to rust through on one little spot. It's smaller than a dime on the driver's side quarter panel and it's slightly damaged from an accident so that one will probably end up getting replaced or fixed I'm uh, when I get the roof put or when I put this roof on this car I'm gonna um, get that figure you know figured out if I need to buy a new quarter panel or whatever but uh, that's all I wanted to go into I just wanted to show some of the uh, early stages of the uh, build actually this is a lot longer than i figured it would hopefully it's interesting to you guys and hopefully you follow the build if you want uh, updates on it like and subscribe uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this build i think it'd be really cool six speed automatic and a six uh, and uh and a 3.7 v6 so um thank you so much for watching have a nice evening cherish your family and goodbye